Hi, this is Julie Hester. In the last video, we started working with floating point numbers. Now I want to show you how you can format output of floating point numbers and text in C++. So C++ has several ways that you can manipulate the way your output is displayed. And these are called I.O. manipulators or input output manipulators. They're going to change how the text and the numbers are displayed on the console window. So for numbers, we can use this to influence the number of decimal places that are displayed. Or with text, we can manipulate how the text is aligned. Some of these manipulators are built in to just our standard libraries. And then some of the manipulators are going to require us to include the IO manip library. Stands for input output manipulation. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to add an additional line at the top of our program to include an additional header file by typing pound sign or hashtag include and then instead of IO stream this time we're going to put IO manip. This doesn't replace IO stream we'll need both header files IO stream and IO manip to make this work. So let's start by looking at floating point numbers. Well by default C++ is going to display six digits. And in the previous video, we wrote a program where we were calculating sales tax and a total for a purchase. And these are the values that these variables had after the program executed. After we calculated the values, we displayed them on the screen with an output statement like this. And what we saw is that the sales tax was displayed with six decimal places and the total was displayed with five decimal places. Now the actual value of the total had six decimal places. So if you're looking at this closely, what you'll see is that the last two digits, the two five on the total got rounded up to a three and in the display of the tax and the total, we only see six digits in each number. For tax, all six digits are after the decimal place, but for total, we have one digit to the left of the decimal place and then five digits to the right of the decimal place. Now, since we're working with money, we're not really so concerned about the fact that these numbers are displaying with a different number of decimal places. But what we are concerned about is we just want this to look like dollars and cents. And so we're going to use a manipulator that's called set precision. Now, as I just said, with money, we only want to see two decimal places. Set precision is going to allow us to specify the number of digits shown on the console window. And this is how it works. Before we show any of the output, we're going to say set precision and then put in parentheses the number of digits that we want to see. And we're going to send that to the Cout object. Then we can display our numbers as we did before. And now when we display them, we're going to see that the tax is 0 0.39 and the total is 5.2. So this does look better. However, the total really should be $5.16. And if I went up to my favorite fast food restaurant, ordered three drinks, and they rounded up my total to 520 instead of 516, I probably wouldn't be too happy with that. 
So set precision by itself is not going to be quite enough for what we want to do here. Both of these numbers are showing exactly two digits, which is what I asked for. And again, with the sales tax, all of the digits are to the right of the decimal place, but the total has one digit to the left and one digit to the right. So this isn't quite what we want to see. So what we can do is we can combine the SAT precision manipulator with fixed. And when we use both of these together, now set precision is going to specify the number of digits that are shown after the decimal point. The first C out, I'm going to send both fixed and set precision to the C out object on the first line. And then I'm going to follow it with the two lines that display both of the numeric or monetary values. Now when I display these numbers, what I'm going to see is something like this. I'm going to see that my tax looks just like it did before. It says it's 39 cents. And now I see that my total is $5.16 instead of $5.20. So this looks a whole lot better. Now that we know how to modify the output of floating point numbers, let's go ahead and add that to the program we had been writing before about buying drinks. If I want to use IO manipulation on these numbers, I'm going to have to add the header file IOManip to the top of the program. So I'm going to come up here and just after line four, I'm going to add another line. It's going to look a lot like 94, but instead of IO stream, it's going to say IO manip. Now I have two header files that are going to include two different libraries into my code when the code is compiled and linked and the executable is built. We don't need to change anything where we declared the variables and we don't need to change anything where we calculated the cost. But what I do want to do is modify how the output is displayed. So I'm going to come down here and before we display anything, I'm going to add a statement, C out, and I'm going to put set precision two because I want two decimal places. Let's go ahead and compile that program and test it. And just like we talked about, when we only put set precision two by itself, we're only going to see two total digits regardless of which side of the decimal place they're on. So here I have 39 cents of tax, but my total is 5.2, which looks a lot like $5.20. That's not really going to work because it's $5.16, and it looks weird anyway. So we'll add one more thing to this output. I'm going to also put fixed on here and that's going to make set precision only apply to the digits after the decimal place. Let's compile and test this once more. And now this looks much better. I see 39 cents for tax and $5.16 for the total charge. So this looks a whole lot better. It looks like what we're looking for. So now that we have learned how to change the number of decimal places showing with our floating point numbers, let's see what we can do to manipulate the text on our screen. One thing we can do is we can set the width of a field. 
we can fill spaces with a character of our choosing, and then we can also align our text either to the left or the right. So let's first see what we can do with a field's width. We're going to use the setW function to pad a field with spaces. And this is, can be very useful make, making fields the same size. We're going to put a number in the parentheses to indicate how wide we want the field to print. And then if we have extra space, we'll just put spaces in that place. So here's a couple of examples. So let's say we want to print the number 5 on a field width of 4. When this is actually printed, because, num because the number 5 only takes one character, three spaces will be printed before the 5, so that it's printing four spaces in total. We could also print the number 1, 2, 3 in a field width size of 4. In this case, we're only going to put a single space in front of the number because the number has three digits. But then we get into a situation where we could be asking C++ to display a value that's larger than the field width that we supply. So in the case of the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have said that we only want to give it four spaces but C++ is not going to truncate our number because then it wouldn't really be the same number if you got rid of one of the digits. So in this case, the set width is really not going to do anything at all and the number will take all five spaces. One thing to watch with set width is that when we use this manipulator, it only applies to the next field. In each of these three cases, I have to say set with the four in order to modify how the number is displayed. Most of the other modifiers are going to be persistent. You'll only need to set them once and then you don't have to set them again and again. Another thing we can do that works hand in hand with set width is set fill. Now by default, set width is using a space to pad the space to pad the characters that it's printing but if we don't want a space to be used as a filler we can specify a different character and so we could do something like this we could decide that we want to use a period as our fill character and then when i go to print these two numbers 1 and 67 in each of them i'm going to specify that i want them to be in an eight character wide field in the case of the one, the display will show seven periods and a one. And the 67 is going to show six periods and then the 67. And it looks like this. It looks sort of like when you see some table of contents and you'll see all the numbers over on the right with all of the leader dots. Another really cool thing you can do with sat fill is you can decide that you want to print a string of one character. And this is how you can do it. So again, I'm going to use set fill to specify the character I want to print. I'm going to say set width of eight again because I want to get eight asterisks. And then I'm going to follow it with basically an empty string. I'm not going to print anything. So I'm going to end up filling all eight characters with the asterisk. And after I execute this statement, then I'll see something like this. So that can be something that you can use to make your display more decorative. And the last thing I want to talk about with modifying text or manipulating the text output is right and left alignment. Now by default, all of our text or numbers are going to be aligned on the right hand side, but I can modify this by either using left or right with C out. Now to make this be a little more obvious about what's happening, I'm going to go ahead and change the set fill to an asterisk so we can see where the spaces really are. And then I'm going to print two words, hello and goodbye with 10 spaces each. 
hello is only six characters with the exclamation mark. So we will print those six characters followed by four asterisks. And goodbye and its exclamation mark are eight characters. So we will print eight characters and two asterisks. Now, which side are the asterisks going to be on? I haven't used a left or a right yet, so I'm going to use the default alignment. And these fields are going to be aligned on the right-hand side. The asterisk will be filling on the left-hand side. But if I don't want it to be like that, I can use a left manipulator with my output. And now when I print the same two string literals, hello and goodbye, this time hello and goodbye are lined up on the left hand side and those fields are filled with asterisks on the right hand side to make them 10 characters each.